1892, William Dixon, chief engineer with Edison Laboratories, and Thomas Edison, using 35 millimeter plastic film, invent the first motion pictures. In 1893, Edison shows moving pictures created on a celluloid strip of film. In theory, these kinetoscope movie cameras could be placed in people's houses and the film retrieved later, but because of the noise and labor involved in retrieving the cameras, probably cameras in people's houses must wait for the conversion of an image to an electronic signal and then will be carried on the phone lines with the secret hidden microphones in phone company customers' houses. Probably a, a drive for miniaturization of microphones and cameras was secretly going on by researchers with Edison and AT&T. Much of the drive for putting cameras in people's houses was clearly males wanting to see nude females and sex, police wanting to solve violent crime, I, I mean theoretically, but also business people that want to gain information about competitors. It is easy to see how more information is more power. The key to capturing the much wanted images from inside people's houses involved a way of sending the images over the phone wire without having to actually periodically enter a house to retrieve a bulky film. The images had to be converted to an electronic signal just as sound had been. This problem is not incredibly difficult, and people probably pursued the answer by viewing a picture like a grid of hundreds of sound recordings, very similar to a sound recording, but multiplied by 2,500 for each dot in a small 50 by 50 dot photo. Clearly, it requires small, precise machining, which was definitely available. Just like sound from a phone call, an image can be sent one dot at a time on a wire and decoded back into an image. In 1895, Wilhelm Röntgen identifies X-rays. Also in 1895, the alternating current electricity generating plant powered by Niagara Falls, funded by George Westinghouse, goes online and provides electricity for the city of Buffalo, New York. Eventually, business buildings and people's houses began to have a wire for power and a wire for the telephone installed. And this evolution of wiring together houses with a telephone wire and an electricity wire happened at the same time all around the developing earth. In this same year, 1895, Guglielmo Marconi sends and receives a wireless telegraph message. With the invention of wireless communication, a new method of sending information is available. However, because of the secret nature of seeing inside people's houses and minds, it may be that the phone company was reluctant to use wireless. The invention of encryption may have caused the phone company to start sending hidden microphone and camera information wirelessly, and the invention of wireless communication also opened watching and listening of people and their thoughts in their houses to people with wireless devices without the dependence on the phone company wires. Clearly, the sending of beams to stimulate neurons in the brain, that major secret invention, is a wireless method of communication which uses photons, or perhaps electrons. The evolution of converting light into an electronic signal is not as clear. In 1897, Carl Braun in Germany invented the cathode ray tube, the CRT, the first publicly known device to use an electron beam that is modulated and directed with a magnetic field to illuminate dots in rows and columns on a fluorescent screen. A cathode ray tube allows an electronic image to be drawn serially, one dot at a time, visualized and or photographed, much faster than an electron electric motor scanning every row and column of an image is. In 1898, Valdemar Paulsen in Denmark invented the telegraphone, which is the first successful device to convert sound waves into magnetic waves on a long wound wire. This is the origin of all magnetic recording. Possibly this wound wire replaces the Berliner flat disks at AT&T for recording phone calls and hidden microphones. In 1900, Reginald Fessenden transmits and receives the first sound wave by wireless radio using his invention of amplitude modulation, AM. 
So by 1900, sound is being wirelessly sent and received. In 1901, the Boston Medical and Surgical Journal published a report on the death of a guinea pig fetus following x-ray exposure, and Williams, William Rollins kills guinea pigs using x-ray beams around this time. From this time on, violent criminals will use x-ray beams to induce cancer in many innocent lawful people, and the x-ray cathode cathode ray tube is the first photon gun where photons are used to inflict damage to living objects. Later photon guns will be masers and lasers which can cut clear through living objects in seconds. In 1902 Arthur Korn in Germany invents tele telephotography, the ability to send a photo electronically through wire. These devices use the light-sensitive metal selenium to convert the different tones of a scanned image into a varying electric current. This device scans a photo point by point using a piece of light-sensitive selenium semi-metal as a semiconductor to vary the current depending on the intensity of light in the photo. So at the other end, a light moving over a point on a photosensitive paper becomes as bright as the point on the original photo. This new photo is then developed and is an exact copy of the original. This is the first electronic image, the first conversion of an area of light to an electronic signal and back again. Clearly, around this time, people were figuring out how to connect an array of selenium dots which convert light to an electronic signal to display the image on a cathode ray tube, or CRT. This is basically the beginning of television, the electronic camera, and probably around now, the secret transmitting of images electronically happened. Although this image is electrical, it is not digital. The image is represented as various currents. How to store an image in electronic format, in other words, how to store the current or resistance for each point in a photo, must have been an immediate next focus. Perhaps this image could be stored on Edison's wax cylinder, or Emil Berliner's phonograph, or Voldemort Paulson's magnetic wire recording device. Even so, putting one of these devices inside a house would be too noisy because it requires an electric motor geared to sweep over an area while sending the various light intensities over a single wire. People realized that there had to be a way of transmitting the many dots of a photo in an orderly way in serial on a single wire without moving parts and focused a serious search for such a device. One answer is a parallel transmission with each dot having a drop of selenium metal and a wire attached, but for a tiny photo of 100 by 100 dots, this amounts to 10,000 wires, far too many wires to be very practical. There had to be some way of quietly transmitting an image in serial, one dot at a time, without any motors or mechanically moving parts. It seems very likely that electrical people figured out how to do this very quickly. Perhaps they used capacitors in series and a grid with dots of selenium to, vary a, uh, to send a varying current serially, one dot at a time, on a single wire. Capacitors, inductors, and timer circuits, for example those used in radio, had been long in use by the first decade in the 1900s. The future of this electronic image storage will see a change from an analog storage of currents to a digital representation of an image. So I think that it is safe to say that electric cameras were invented by the end of the first decade of the 1900s, and once that happened, cameras, perhaps wired or wireless, were rolled out by the phone company and others into public apartments and houses, in addition to the secret microscopic microphones. In particular, the houses of interesting people and beautiful women would be the first to be filled with the newly invented cameras. In 1907, only 8% of all dwellings have electricity. In possibly October of 1910, Mihalo, or Michael, Igvorsky, Pupin, so sometimes called Pupin, working at Columbia University in New York City,